Hello, Neon Pickle. You ask, what stands out most to me in this book? Swamishri's humility speaks a lot to my heart. Time and time again, there'll be some disturbance. And it, even his personal attendants are like, no, 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 we don't have time for this. And they are only trying to serve their spiritual master. Swamishri always says, no, 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 <laughs> we have time. <laughs> and he's always late for everything because he takes the time to solve every problem. And I think that's lovely. Nowhere to be other than where he is right now. In love, at ease. Everyday Spirituality with Pramukh Swami. Pramukh Swami was a president and guru of a very large international spiritual organization that does a lot of lovely humanitarian work. He has since left his body, aka passed on. But we recount what remains in the hearts of the millions of lives that he touched. Here we are in chapter two, called In Love. We are discussing various love stories, which this spiritual being inspired in many. Consistency helps love last. Swamishri never tired of loving. He continued to do so over decades and generations. On one particular day, Swamishri met 348 bhaktas, devotees, after a meal in Edison, New Jersey. He met another 358 bhaktas after his evening meal on that very day. Who's counting, I wonder? <laughs> a teen helping Swami Sri wear his slippers after the evening session asked him how he managed to do the same thing day after day and with such a high volume of people, listen to problems, comfort people, share advice, and then repeat. He was getting tired simply watching Swami Sri's routine. Swami Sri answered immediately, Do you ever get tired of eating, sleeping, or watching television? This is my bhakti, my loving devotion. I don't ever get tired of doing bhakti. If you think of meeting people, listening to them, and reading and writing letters as your bhakti, your loving devotion, to that source energy, God. You won't ever tire or grow bored. Besides, if you do the same thing over and over again, you will only get better at it. I am practicing my love for God through serving all of His creation. This particular consistency was the hallmark of Swami Sri's love. It was the key to the lasting connections he built. Swamishri was consistent because he never lost interest in the objects of his love. He maintained relationships through generations and, in most cases, across thousands of miles. On the 12th of September, 2003, bhaktas from Nenpur had come to Sorangpur for Swami Sri's darshan, witnessing. Swami Sri had known their families for more than three generations and eagerly launched into a series of questions. How are things in Nainpur? Do you go to the mandir regularly? Make sure you do satsang, spiritual association with scriptures, devotees, and the guru. My guru, Shastraji Maharaj enjoyed the company of the bhaktas from Nainpur, Somabhai, and others were very dedicated. The devotees were very loyal and faithful. Do you know Somabhai's story? Swamishri did not wait for an answer and began narrating the following story. Somabhai and his three sons 
Dhaiya Bhai, Narayan Bhai and Mani Bhai wanted to build a mandir in the village. They were farmers and had planted vegetables on over two acres of land. It had kept them very busy. They would grow the vegetables and then go to the market to sell them. Soma Pai realized that they would never finish the mandir unless they stopped farming. He called his sons and told them, Uproot the crops. The mandir comes first. The entire family joined in the seva, the selfless service. They were faithful and courageous. They knew that building a mandir in the village would provide a better, addiction-free and faith-filled life to everyone. Today, Shanti Bhai is still in satsang. Soma Bhai's son was Dhaya Bhai. Dhaya Bhai's son is Shanti Bhai. Pointing to Shanti Bhai's son, Swami Sri added, You are the fourth generation of the family in the community. I have seen all of you. If you ever need anything, please do come and find me. Swami Sri's love and care pervaded generations and distance. Remarkably, he maintained interest in the lives of his bhaktas and recalled such information without ever having written it down. Swami Sri's strong sense of empathy naturally drew him to those who suffered pain and difficulty. His eyes would tear up and his heart would soften particularly for the marginalized and underrepresented. I speak in greater detail about Swami Sri's efforts to give a voice to those in need in chapter 4, which is two chapters away. Here, I primarily address his love for those who are in pain and often go unnoticed by others. After a long day of meetings and assemblies in Silvasa, Swami Sri finally laid down in bed and pulled the comforter over his legs and chest. It was close to 11 p.m. and he had an early morning. Just as a sadhu, a monk, was about to turn off the lights, Anand Murti Das Swami gently opened the door and peeked inside. He whispered to Chinmaya Das Swami, Darshrat, from Kodila is here. He really wants a glimpse of Swamishri. Can I bring him in? Jinmaya Das Swami was miffed by the request. Really? Look at the time. Tell him to come back tomorrow. Swamishri is asleep. Swamishri heard Chinmaya Das Swami's response. He sat up in bed and asked, What is the matter? Who is at the door? The sadhus tried to divert his attention, but Swami Sri was up now. He asked the younger sadhus to bring in Dashrat. Dashrat limped into the room and fell at Swami Sri's feet. The guru and disciple spoke for a few minutes, during which time Swami Sri blessed him and answered his questions. Jinmaya Swami could not hold in his frustration any longer. Dashrat! Look at the time. Next time, please try to come earlier. Do you just show up at people's homes this late at night? Swamishri immediately interposed. We have met him. He is happy. I am happy. What is the point in bringing this up? The sadhus continued to chai Dashrat. Swamishri intervened again. He must be tired and hungry. Did any of you ask him what happened? why he was late. The trouble he must have taken to come here is far greater than mine in going to bed a few minutes late. Upon Swamishri's urging, Dashrat detailed the events of his day. He left from his village at seven in the morning and made multiple stops, hitching rides in trucks and rickshaws to get to the nearby village of Masat. 
he had trouble finding a ride from there to Silvasa and ended up walking the last six kilometers on foot despite having a disability which impaired the use of one of his legs. It had taken him almost 15 hours to get to Silvasa. Swamishri had tears in his eyes. He turned to the sadhus and said, Try to put yourself in his shoes. He had gone through so much for my darshan, my presence here, coming to see me. Instead of getting angry, you should be asking him if he has had his meals and has a place to rest. Swamishri blessed Dashrat's foot and advised the sadhus to personally sit with the youth while he ate dinner. As Swamishri turned to sleep in his bed, he could not stop thinking about Dashrat's pain and his journey. Dashrat too would never forget Swamishri's love and support. Swamishri similarly had a soft corner in his heart for children who suffered from physical ailments. He went out of his way to be accessible and available to those who had trouble reaching him. His love bridged distances of time and space. Swamishri's car was driving through the Boracha district of Surat in southern, southern Gujarat. Several hundred bhaktas had gathered on both sides of the road for a glimpse of their spiritual master. Swamishri asked the bhakta driving his car to pull over by the side of the road. He hopped out of the car as it was still coming to a stop. Swamishri walked to the side of the road and sat down on the ground. A crowd gathered around the saffron-clad spiritual master. While in the car, Swamishri had noticed the young boy who was trying to get his attention by waving his hands. The child suffered from polio and had lost use of his legs. Swamishri sat with him on the side of the road for several minutes, talking, playing, and making fun gestures. Swamishri's love was spontaneous and organic, which made him all the more accessible for those who looked at him for guidance. And let's pause our reading of Swamishri's love stories there. Thank you for listening, everyone. <laughs>